You guys have asked for it. You guys have begged for it. And finally, I'm going to give you what you guys have asked for in the comments for well over a year. And that is a rifle painting video, just like every other gun slash outdoor YouTube channel on this platform. So let's dive in. Painting your rifle can be a big decision for a lot of people because we invest a lot of money and time and care into building our rifles. And I struggled with it for a really long time as well. I was like, man, I spent all of this money on this rifle. If I paint it and I don't like it, it's never going to be the same again. And then one day I just grew up and, uh, you know, painted my rifle and I have loved it. Now all of my rifles are painted. However, this rifle needs to be repainted. The green turned out a little more gray than I like, and it has a little bit more tan uh, than I truly had wanted. Plus, I've added some different parts and whatnot over the past year or so. So we're going to go ahead and give it a paint job. This is my Daniel Defense 16-inch with a 1-8 to primary arms LPVO and a Vortex uh, top-mounted red dot. We have a streamlight uh, flashlight up top. Eventually, one day, this will get an IR laser. However, I only have enough money in the budget for the, at the moment for one IR laser. A recent addition I've made to this rifle was this Magpul bipod. Um, no specific reason why. I just wanted to. So I did, because I'm an American. When it comes to painting rifles, guys, the big thing you need to look at is your environment, but not just for one season or what it looks like outside right now. Year rounds. Your rifle is not going to blend into every time of year unless you're constantly painting your rifle. I personally like to give my rifle a paint job that is going to generally fit its environment year round. So for me, living in Kentucky where there's a lot of woodlands and I'm a very green in the spring and in the summer, and then I'm kind of uh, the darker green to into the browns uh, in the late fall and in the winter. So I want to paint a darker rifle. And a lot of people focus a lot on the paint job. This is something that is not as hard as it may seem. You know, your rifle is going to blend pretty well regardless of your paint job so long as you have a decent color scheme and your colors are correct. So don't overthink this. So when we're painting our rifle, guys, the very first thing I always do is break the rifle apart completely. Yes, you're going to have to re-zero everything when it's all said and done, but that's okay because going to the range is fun. But I'm going to break everything down and I'm going to take masking tape and protect everything that is important, such as the uh, magwell, my... Uh, muzzle device. I like to tape off the numbers and you know the different dials on my LPVO so that stuff doesn't get ruined. Um, you know, some people like to tape their trigger. Uh, I don't necessarily tape my trigger because I'm not soaking my rifle in paint to begin with. But there are various things that you're going to want to protect. So masking tape is you know the go-to for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna break everything down off this rifle. I'm gonna tape everything up. And then I will show you how I paint my rifles. All right, guys. So I have everything uh, out on the ground here. Anything that's kind of sensitive or has numbers or anything like that, I paint off in blue. Some people like to break their rifle all the way down. I'm not a big fan of that. You know, for the rifle, all I did was tape off the muzzle device. Since I commonly run a suppressor, uh, I put some tape over top of the magwell. And as a precaution, I normally stuff a couple paper towels in here just to help protect the magwell. And then I tape off the trigger. Everything else uh, is, you know, just ready to go. I extend my stock all the way and I take my bolt carrier group out. Other than that, I don't do anything else uh, to my rifle. For stuff like optics, you know, I will tape off where my numbers are on all of my dials. For my backup iron sights that I run on my rifle, I taped off the top where everything else normally is. Uh, 
like where the little instructions are and then the top, just because I don't want uh, paint to deter the capabilities of my iron sights. So, first thing I'm going to do is just give this a very good base coat, which for today, we're going to be using deep, uh, deep forest green, uh, the can uh, classic Rust-Oleum camo. So let's give this a spray. And for this stuff, guys, we are not trying to soak everything. We're just giving it a good spray. There's little areas that need to get touched up on. Do so, but we're not trying to soak everything that we spray. Make sure we get all of the angles. That way we can do this all in one, in one swoop. If you hear the chickens in the background, I apologize. Like I said before, I'm going to go with a lot less brown this time. I guess I should say more of the desert, the coyote. And a lot of this stuff, you really don't have to paint that much. It's just a simple turn or two. Especially if you're rocking black. We're really just trying to get rid of that shine and just add a little bit of different color to all of this. It's nothing... Nothing that serious. Like I said before, guys, make sure you're getting all sides, all angles. Specifically, my optics, I'm a little more careful. Another thing with this, guys, is we don't want to leave blobs of paint on our rifle. That's why I'm doing just, you know, kind of quick pass bys. That's another reason we don't want to necessarily, you know, just soak our rifle. So I'll give this, I would say probably about 45 minutes to dry and I'll come back and I'll flip it over and then I'll uh, do some touch-ups depending on what needs to be done. And then we'll get into some striping. All right, guys, we have our base layer done with the green. Now it's time to do, uh, you know, some accessory painting to this. You can use different things like uh, cloth netting. You can cut out stencils. You can grab natural vegetation. Whatever it is you really like to do, depending on the pattern that you're going to uh, try and accomplish. I'm going to take something like this manila folder and just cut some stencils out with it and then paint on various patterns onto this rifle. Um, I'm a big kind of like stripe and curve kind of guy, something that breaks up, you know, just the monotonous of the green paint. And, and another thing with this guys is if you don't, if your paint comes out like a little smudged in one spot on a, on a certain party rifle or something like that, don't, don't freak out about it and don't try to overpaint it to uh, try and fix it because this rifle is going to look really, really, really pretty for right when you get done painting it. And then so long as you're training, like you're supposed to, the rifle's gonna get all dirty again anyway. So let's go ahead and cut out some stencils. So I have just a few random kind of curve pattern lines cut out in this one half of the manila folder. And for this, I'm just gonna be using the Straits Black Camo Rust-Oleum. And for this guys, it's just completely random patterns. 
you know, it's, it's nothing specific. I will, you know, kind of lay that on there just like that. And I'll just real lightly come across something like that. Now I have just a real nice black line that kind of breaks up that pattern. And I'll do that, you know, for, you know, all of this. I'll just give it a few, few random sprays, just breaking everything up. And it doesn't have to be a lot. Do not, you know, overcorrect. Just get a few random patterns in here, however you see fit. And I'll take one right there and just... Boom, I got, a, I got a single stripe through there. And that's really all I'll do for the first layer, guys. Again, you're not trying to repaint your rifle with your secondary color. You're, you're now breaking up the monotonous that is your rifle. If you want to, you can throw in other colors like this depending on your environment. Before, I had some coyote thrown in here, but it was a little, uh, it was a little too bright for what is normally considered, uh, you know, my environment you know a lot of my wooded areas and whatnot around here are very thick it's very dark in the woods regardless of what time of year it is so you know i don't need those lighter colors to help me blend in um but you know you can throw in whatever colors you know you're, you're going to see fits for you all right guys and that is our painted rifle now i'm going to let this sit for a minimum of three maybe four hours if this was a project you did during the day just go ahead and let it rest overnight. For some reason, you know, when this paint really starts to dry, the paint color really starts to settle in nicely. But this is what we have, guys. Now, one thing I did not mention before was painting IR lasers. This rifle obviously does not have an IR laser, but on my other rifle, I do have an IR laser, and that rifle is also painted. But I did not paint the IR laser. And you may ask why, because the IR lasers normally come in a rather you know, shiny kind of finish. Um, and that really just is truly resale value. I really don't care about the rifle resale value because I'm not in the business uh, of reselling rifles uh, per se. But for IR lasers, a lot of us are probably getting in at some sort of budget level option before we start moving on to bigger and better things. And, you know, you don't necessarily want to potentially ruin your resale value of something like that. That's my own personal opinion. Everybody may not share that opinion. But that is my personal opinion. However, if you are happy with your IR laser and you don't foresee yourself switching that out, you can go ahead and paint that. Just know that on the IR laser, there is a lot of you know little things that are going to need to be uh, covered over with tape. But you can do it with the IR lasers. And this is not the finished step of camouflaging your rifle, guys. This is just a starter step. If you live in any type of you know vegetative environment, you're not going to be able to paint your rifle to truly match what your environment looks like because one, your environment goes through various stages of life throughout the year through seasons and its color is going to change. Um, but unless you're in like something like the desert, you can get away with, you know, painting your rifle a nice coyote color with some black and whatnot. You're, you're not going to be able to match your environment. So the next step to this is adding some sort of cami netting or ghillie netting to this rifle and then further past that adding actual vegetation from the environment in which you're in if you're doing something operational um you know if you're uh looking to truly camouflage your rifle this is this is just the beginner step however in an urban environment something like this does uh you know add a nice aspect to it all like i said before guys just make sure that you're taping off important things uh like numbers lenses muzzle devices so on and so forth. And if you're a person that runs a suppressor, like all of my rifles are fitted to uh, take my suppressor, you either need to get a cover for your suppressor um, or you can get wrap that is somewhat heat resistant, something like that, because you don't want to paint your rifle uh, and remove all of that shiny factor from it and then have your nice shiny suppressor sitting on top. So take all of that kind of stuff into consideration, guys, and paint your rifle. I'm no longer asking. Paint your rifle. That's all I've got, guys. Until next time, train hard, train often.